nature of the footprints, namely their remarkable consistency, their uh, biomechanical appropriateness. Spanning the entire globe involving hundreds of different cultures explaining the same phenomenon by different names. At some point, you have to go, even as a scientist, you have to say, well, there's got to be something. It can't all be math. Welcome to Out of the Woods with the Bigfoot Influencers. My name is Tim Halloran, and I am thrilled that you're joining us today. Uh, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some audio from my interview uh, with Les Stroud, uh, also known as the Survivor Man, uh, my interview from the book. So if you purchased the Bigfoot Influencers book already, you've probably read Les's uh, chapter he has in the book. But you may also have clicked on some of the QR codes we have in the book and hear, heard some of the audio. But I have so much audio that I want to share with everybody that, you know, obviously we can't put, you know, in the book. We can't put all the QR codes in. So I just want to make sure I made that uh, available for each and every one of you. So before we get to that, uh, I want to, you know, take care of a few other things. If you're interested in what we're doing, head on over to the BigfootInfluencers.com. You can leave us a comment. You can check out uh, all of our past episodes. You can see where you can purchase the book, and you can see what some of the other folks in the uh, subject uh, matter are doing. I have that on some uh, other unique things on there as well. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can find us at the Bigfoot Influencers. Uh, YouTube is the Bigfoot Influencers. Also, you can go to YouTube and find us on the Untold Radio Network AM, where we share our weekly podcast. And then if you're on Twitter, the BF Influencers and Instagram's the same thing. So again, back to what we're here for today. Super excited that you guys are joining us. I'm going to be sharing a few different excerpts from uh, the interview I had with Les Stroud, as I, as I mentioned before. And we're going to go through it in between each question. Uh, I will jump back in and do a little commentary just to kind of set you up for the question so you know what I'm asking them to kind of make it uh, seem to make sense. But to kick it off, uh, I asked Les a more of a generic question about uh, training in the woods or surviving in the woods. And I asked if he had any advice for newcomers, if they were going to, you know, prepare themselves to go out in the woods. And here's what he had to say. Hope you enjoy. Train, train. Yeah, train, train, train. I, you know, it's a good question because uh, people think they can watch an episode of Survivor Man uh, or any of the copycat shows and then just head out and be, you know, go off and survive in the woods. But they, they miss the fact that I spent 15 years training and then instructing before I, you know, went off and did this. And people, it's like you wouldn't watch olympic ski jumping on tv one day and the next day strap on a set of skis that you've never put on before and go to the top of a jump so that's pretty cool so uh the next thing i asked Les is i asked him if while he was out there the many years he was filming or even when he wasn't filming if he ever encountered a moment where he was afraid for his life or his well-being and i thought it was interesting how he answered that so here's what les had to say about that i guess the, the, the toughest would be um the um the coming down of the mountain in uh, the norway episode of survivor man in that situation uh i put myself in a pretty precarious situation by uh by being close to hypothermia i was soaked mm -hmm. soaked soaked to the bone with sweat and also soaked to the skin with rain so um that that was i i got pretty pretty nervous and fearful in that day I, I did make it down to the bottom but man that was a that was a tough a tough day for big time because I, I came from 10 feet of snow down to no snow and freezing rain all the way through it so that was pretty rough pretty uh, fascinating uh the situations that uh les had put himself in while he was filming and making that series uh so the next question we're going to start getting into a little bit of bigfoot so i asked him uh if there was a uh you know a bipedal uh, animal or primate running around or, or walking around in the woods uh, where, you know, being elusive, what environmental conditions would something like that need to survive? And that sounds a pretty interesting answer here. And uh, I think uh, you guys will enjoy this one too. Well, part of me wants to say it's an unfair question to ask because it's okay. like saying, so what are these? Right. And I, because the easy, the cop out easy answer is 
I don't freaking know. But what I can say is if we look at the attributes that are associated with the thousands of anecdotal references, we come up with a the existence of of something, you know, a mm-hmm. phenomenon that has both physical and non-physical manifestations. In its physical manifestations, apparently, it needs to eat. It needs to defecate. It stinks. It can swim. It can climb mountains so easily with big monster steps. It can scream. It may be able to do infrasound. It may be like a lion. It may be able to do cloaking like an octopus. So you have all of these physical attributes given to it by thousands or tens of thousands of anecdotal references. You compile them all up in a list, and you, you have this kind of list plus a few other things involved there. So then you have to look at that and say, well, what does that require? Well, it re- eating requires prey or gathering. So it's got to mm-hmm. eat something, right? And, you know, what is it? Is it leaves and berries? Is it deer and elk? You know, uh, does it eat humans? I don't know. Right. So, so then it, you know, does it, if it's flesh and body, well, does it need to be warm in the winter? Does it need to be dry when it rains? Does it avoid rain? Does it need caves? Uh, You, you really have to kind of compile all of the various anecdotal references to attributes and then say, so a species who does all of these things by overwhelming majority of the references requires the, it needs to get out of the rain. It needs to stay put in the cold. You know, uh, it, it needs to get cool if it's down in more jungle locales. So that's what you're looking at. So asking Les Stroud what he thinks they need is kind of, a, in a way, an unfair question. But my response is that is let's take a look at, you know, all of the references and then then compile them and then place place the answer to that question in the ecosystem that would that would you know, suffice. Fair and enough. I'm not copping out. I'm just trying to give you a very detailed answer to that. I thought that was an interesting uh, take, and uh, I appreciated how Les is, uh, was candid about it and uh, totally, totally into what, you know, what he was saying there too. So um, the next thing that we're going to talk about is I asked Les um, why he decided to make Survivor Man Bigfoot. And you, if you haven't checked that out, Make sure you go over to YouTube, but you can catch out. Uh, I don't know if I think it was this eight episodes, I believe. Uh, but you can find them, go to, you know, Les Stroud, Survivor Man YouTube page, and you can find the uh, all the episodes there uh, for free on YouTube. And here's what he had to say about uh, why he made uh, Survivor Man Bigfoot. It was um, sort of three parts equal my own fascination with the subject, the knowledge that I'm a good documentary filmmaker, and the reaction to how poorly Finding Bigfoot had treated the subject matter. To elaborate is to say that I prefer to work on subject matters that come sort of directly out of my own interest, non-derivative, that sort of thing. But every once in a while in life, I think the Richard Branson version of how to succeed, which is, you know, you see it make a better mousetrap kind of thing, kind of a philosophy. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, I see that. That does happen within me. It's like, I could do that so much better. And so when it came to finding Bigfoot, my, and you've heard me say this on multiple interviews mm-hmm. by now, I'm sure. The, the problem I have with it is not like, I, I think Cliff is a really cool guy. I like him a lot. He's, he's a wonderful man. I don't, I don't know any of the others. Um, including I don't know Matt Moneymaker, but what I can say is what that show did to the phenomenon of Bigfoot was it turned it into a cultural punchline, and that was very sad the day that that happened because I realized now no one will ever take this seriously. It's too funny now. And uh, you've heard me say, for example, you know, there's a reference to it in a Robert Downey Jr. movie where he plays a lawyer and and he says, and my, my client wants to see a Sasquatch. And it's just, you know, it's like when I remember thinking, oh, God, now it's just a big joke for everybody. People can't say it without giggling. 
And I mean, so, you know, and, and the antics of Bobo were laughable and, and, and inane and, and very unfortunate. So I was a little, not in sense, but I definitely was irked that it's like, man, you guys took a phenomenal opportunity and you blew it. And I'm not saying they didn't do, I mean, they made millions of dollars and big ratings. Uh, Good for them. Good for them. But they still ruined an opportunity to actually take a very interesting phenomenon, phenomenon seriously and after that, it was done. So I thought, well, let me see if I can do something to inch it backwards right. to a place of, hey, can we not all just be interested in this without being laughed at? So, again, uh, interesting uh, comments from uh, Les Stroud and uh, open and honest comments from him. Uh, we uh, Dana and I actually had a uh, a full interview with him on the Untold Radio Network as well. You guys should check that out too. That was a fun. Uh, I, I don't know the episode number. I apologize, but you guys can find it. Uh, that was a fun interview with Les. He's he's just uh, he's just uh, an honest, upfront guy, and I really appreciate that. And we've uh, we've had a ton of conversations around on the subject and and things not related to the subject. So uh, my last uh, question I'm adding here, or my answer here that I'm adding here, is uh, I asked Les if he had an elevator pitch. So in other words, if he was in an elevator with a skeptic, an open-minded skeptic, uh, so we only had a few minutes to, you know, or a few sentences, however you want to put it, to give his pitch on what he thinks about the existence of Bigfoot, what would it be? So this was Les's comments on that. Here's what I used to say. First of all, don't ask me if I believe in Bigfoot. Ask me if I think it's plausible that out there in a vast area of wilderness, which does still exist, is it possible that a bipedal, upright, walking species with incredible attributes has been able to remain undetected, but is also responsible for hundreds of thousands of anecdotal references, including rock throwing, screaming, sightings, footprints, hair samples, defecation. Ask me if that's possible. Then I would say, yeah, I think it's at least plausible. There, now we're on the second floor and the elevator pitch is over. That's what I used to say. Well, there you have it. I I hope you all enjoyed uh, a few of those outtakes. I've got more. I'm pretty sure that I'll be sharing some more Les Stroud uh, here in the future once I I pull it out and and put it in a format like we did on this one. So again, want to thank each and every one of you for joining. Uh, Dana and I, you can find us again on the Untold Radio Network on our weekly podcast there. You can listen to us here. So wherever you're getting this, you can, whether it's YouTube or if it's audio, you know, Spotify, uh, Apple, uh, iHeartRadio, wherever you're listening, uh, you know, do Dana and I a favor if you like it. If you like what you hear, give us a five star, drop us comments. Uh, we love to hear it. We, again, appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, you can find us on, on the social media uh, platforms, as we stated both before. And we will uh, look forward to hearing from you. And we'll talk soon.